In the stillness of dawn, when the mountains exhale mist and the air hangs heavy with silence, a man begins to move. His steps are light, but his intent is absolute. This is Kylian Jornet, the athlete who turned the impossible into his daily terrain. For years, he has danced with altitude, cold, and exhaustion, redefining not just what the body can do, but what it can become. Dr. Jesus Alvarez Herms, one of the world's leading experts in exercise physiology, looks at Killian's data not with analysis, but with awe. We're not just talking about performance, he says, we're talking about a biological model of extreme adaptation. Because Killian doesn't simply compete, he evolves. Take the 2022 UTMB, a race already synonymous with suffering. For most athletes, reaching 20 millimoles per liter of lactate in the blood means collapse muscles. Scream, systems fail, the body shuts down. But Killian? At that precise threshold he attacked. His stride quickened. His body, flooded with lactate, began to burn it as fuel. Most athletes specialize in one metabolic pathway, explains Alvarez. Killian activates all of them at once. Lipolysis, ketosis, glycolysis, every system firing in harmony. He doesn't break, he transforms. He uses lactate as gasoline. In a world where lactate is feared as the signal of failure, Killian treats it as an invitation. His slow twitch fibers, his trained heart, his mitochondria, all conspire to recycle what others discard. It's the ultimate expression of metabolic intelligence. This Alvarez calls metabolic flexibility, the ability to use the right fuel at the right time. But while others chase it through restrictive diets and misguided fasting, Killian finds it out there, in the mountains where science meets chaos. He trains his gut the way others train their legs. He's built a digestive system that adapts to terrain, altitude, and effort. It's not what he eats or Ignace nice worrying, says the physiologist. It's what he can assimilate. During descents, he tolerates fats and proteins. In steep climbs, only liquid carbohydrates with precise molecular ratios. Every detail measured, every response recorded. We know how his intestine reacts on each segment of a course, Alvarez says. He avoids inflammation the way others avoid fatigue. His nutrition is a living system. Because in ultra-endurance, the gut is as vital as the heart. A muscle can tear, but a swollen intestine can end a dream. For Killian, the question isn't how many calories he can consume. It's how many he can absorb without breaking equilibrium. Sometimes that means not eating at all. On technical terrain, when digestion becomes a risk, he simply chooses silence. Conserving harmony over hunger. That's the essence of ultra-resistance. Alvarez concludes, It's not just about surviving the effort, but keeping every system, muscular, digestive, neural, in fragile symphony. Altitude is his other cathedral hypoxia. The thin air that suffocates most is, for Killian, a teacher. He trains both in natural highlands and in controlled chambers, where every breath is a calculated experiment. I wrote my doctoral thesis on hypoxia, says Alvarez. It doesn't just improve oxygen transport, it enhances anaerobic performance. Killian trains at altitude not because it's fashionable, but because he understands exactly what stimulus it gives him. For most, the air thins and the world slows. For Killian, the body opens. His lungs expand, his blood thickens, his muscles adapt. There are pulmonary responders, hematologic responders, muscular responders, Alvarez notes. Killian is all three, that's why he thrives where others merely survive. Yet physiology alone doesn't explain him. Behind the data lies something more intangible, a mind that refuses to settle. The difference between a great athlete and a legend, Alvarez says, is the obsession to always look for the limit. Killian's relationship with the scientist began with that hunger, the need not just to race but to understand, he didn't want splits or times. He wanted truth, to know what happens inside when the human engine is pushed beyond convention. And in that pursuit, he discovered something few ever touch. Systemic health. You can't ask a body to run in ketosis for hours or to endure dehydration if the foundation isn't complete, explains the doctor. Kidneys, liver, intestines, nervous system, mitochondria, they must all function in harmony. Only then can you push the system beyond comfort. Killian's body isn't merely strong, it's integrated. His organs, cells, and neurons work like an orchestra that never loses tempo, even in chaos. So is Killian unique? Yes, says Alvarez, but not because of one factor. It's the combination. Genetics, microbiota, training, altitude, environment, attitude together, they create what we see. 
He's evolution made athlete, but even evolution doesn't repeat. Not even his children training the same way would be identical. The scientist adds, genetics mutate. History doesn't copy itself. Killian is a singular intersection of chance and will. There's a poetic truth in that, because Killian's story isn't just about records. It's about remembering in an age where comfort has dulled our edges. He carries within him the memory of what humans once were. Adaptable, resilient, and fearless in the face of extremes, he runs not just up mountains but through epochs, connecting modern science with our ancestral need to test ourselves against nature. Each summit, each breathless climb, each blurred horizon becomes a bridge between biology and meaning. You can see it in his eyes when he stands alone at altitude where sound disappears and the world becomes pure geometry. He doesn't look victorious, he looks curious, as if asking the mountain one more question about himself. Because for Killian, endurance isn't about suffering. It's about understanding the pain is data. The fatigue is communication. Every limitation whispers something about the human machine. And when he listens long enough, the barrier dissolves, Jesus Alvarez calls him, the biological memory of what we used to be. But maybe Killian is more than that. Maybe he's what we could be again. If we dared to meet discomfort as a teacher, if we saw adaptation, not as survival, but as art. When he descends from the heights, the world below seems smaller, slower, safer. Yet there's no arrogance in him, only the quiet humility of someone who has seen the true scale of things because the mountains never lie. They strip away everything that isn't essential leaving only breath, rhythm, and truth. And somewhere in that vast silence, Killian Journey keeps running, not away from limits, but toward them. Maybe that's what makes him incomparable. Not his genetics, not his training, but his relentless belief that the edge of human potential is not a wall. It's a horizon, and horizons for Killian are meant to be crossed.